I you I live by the philosophy. Like I I really try to to strengthen myself in three basic areas: mind, body, spirit, right? So every day, every day, those are three areas of my life that I'm trying to add something into the war chest, whatever it might be, the biggest thing or the smallest thing. So my mind, I'm usually reading something. I'm trying to learn something new. Body, working out, doing something to make sure as I get older, I'm getting older healthy. And spirit, just staying in touch with my God. And it was a funny thing because it don't have to be anything big. And I want movers, like I want y'all to strengthen yourself in these three areas because as we go out and we are in battle day in, day out, and we trying to get our careers and our businesses off the ground, you gotta make sure you are battle ready. And in order to be battle ready, you gotta make sure your mind, your body, your spirit, they up the par. And this week in particular, I was watching a program and I learned something that I never knew. Like it, it was like word. And they were talking about Siamese twins. And maybe y'all knew this. I didn't. But Siamese twins, they have to be the same sex. I had no idea. You can only have two boys, Siamese twins, or two girls. You cannot have a boy and a girl. And when I learned that, that was a little bit of nickel knowledge, something I never know. But I was like, damn, it's so obvious. All the Sami twins I ever seen, they were the same gender. And it got me thinking about a conversation I had with my good friend Callie last week. And me and Callie were talking. And we were just talking about following our passion, following our purpose in this life. And... Sometimes when you're following your purpose, it ain't like you get all of the signs from the universe telling you, yes, go after it. You're doing it. Sometimes it's just an inner voice. Sometimes it's just you knowing beyond knowing. You can't put it into words like, I know I'm on the right path. I'm following my purpose. But I can't even explain why. God just got me going down this road at this time, and I know it's the right thing for me. So when me and her hung up the phone, I got this long text in my inbox, and it came from somebody who had never, ever hit me before. It was just somebody who randomly bumped into one of my motivational videos, and they sent me this text just letting me know, like, look, I know right now you are not getting hundreds of thousands of views. You damn near ain't even getting tens of thousands of views. But what you're doing, what you're doing, this is something from above. You are touching people, whether you realize it or not. You have to keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop. Just know that there is somebody out here right now that bumped into your content and it made all the difference in my life. And I remember when I got it, I immediately cut it and pasted it and sent it to my girl, Callie. And I'm like, yo, Callie, check this out. And Callie hit me back and she was like, yo, Sean, oh, wow. We was just talking about getting confirmations, just talking about even when all of the fanfare in all of the likes, in all of the, the accolades are not there. Sometimes God is just going to let you know you on the right path. So keep going. And then she ended it with, I'm proud of you. And even if this thing don't blow up, just know you're doing the right thing. And I was like, yo, you were speaking my language till you got to that last sentence. Like, like, like me and you, we was here for a second. But that last sentence, I don't even recognize, like, like, oh, so I had to hit her back. And I'm like, yo, 
Yes, I am living my life purpose. And the reason I sent you this is because we was just talking about it. But God didn't put me on this path so I wouldn't blow up. That ain't even an option. I don't care what it looks like today. I know what's coming down the road for me. And she hit me back just with the basic LOL, this, that, and the third. So as I saw that program this week, I started to think because so many speakers and so many people will tell any and all of us, as we're going after our dream, you got to believe. You got to believe. And they say belief like it's something easy to do. They say belief like they're not human. They just wake up in the morning and they just believe. Their mind is just always focused. And I'm thinking to myself, yes, you have to believe. But the reason that I come at y'all so raw and I give y'all stories about my ups, my downs, where I'm at today, where I was a year ago, where I'm trying to be, it's because I'm, I'm human. And we're going to have up days and we're going to have down days. And even me, there's some days where you just not going to believe. But I know, yes, you have to believe. And I actually went to the dictionary because I needed to understand that word. What does it mean to believe? And the dictionary word, meaning of that word is simple. To accept something as fact. To accept something as truth. Simple as that. You either going to believe or you're not. Either you're going to do this thing or you're not. Either you are going to get rich or you're going to die trying. There is no middle ground. But what so many of these speakers don't tell you about, what so many of these speakers fail to mention, is the polar opposite of that belief. And that's the thing that I need to zone in because that is that other twin. It's that Siamese twin that cannot live in the same building. And it's doubt. People think unbelief is the opposite of belief. But that's not it at all. Doubt is the opposite of belief. And when I went to look that word up, that word said very simply, it's a lack of conviction. It's uncertainty. And what I need y'all to understand, movers, there are some things that just can't exist in this world together. In this world, I don't care what room you go into, how dark it is. Light cannot exist in the same room as dark. You can go in that room and it is pitch black. But when you hit that switch, immediately light disappears. And that's got to be the same way that you are with your dream and believing in it. You can't have no doubt. They can't coexist together. Those two are polar opposites. One cannot survive if the other's in the building. And some of y'all, yes, you believe, but you allow this doubt to creep in and it comes in small po in small um doses a little at a time a little at a time and before long you find yourself giving up you find yourself saying this ain't for me it was never gonna work anyway you find yourself acting the part but no longer believing the part you gotta believe but that word doubt, it can't exist in your world, y'all. I want y'all to think of it as simple as I can put it. Think of, for anybody who's ever been in a vehicle, which I'm sure all of us have, it's that tire. And the tire itself, that is your dream. But in order for that tire to do what it was made to do, it has to be filled up with air. That air is your belief. And you can put 25, 35, 
45 pounds of air in that tire and be going down the road smooth, no problems. But all it got to do is go over one little old nail, a nail that might weigh two, three ounces. And that air comes out of that tire. That is the way it is when it comes to your belief system and doubt. Doubt is that little nail and it pokes in and you might not have a full blowout. It might be a slow leak. And that's why it's so important for you to stay in a place where you can get service, to make sure you know where all them service centers are. In my case, it's God. In y'all's case, it might be your best friends. It might be somebody who can put that belief back into your system. But if, if you don't get that tire fixed, if you don't take care of that doubt, eventually, I don't care how expensive that car is. I don't care how good that tire is. That tire is useless when all the air come out. I'll put it another way for y'all. We don't know been the parties. We don't know been the celebrations. And we see thousands and thousands and thousands of balloons put up. But it might take hours to blow them balloons up. But if you go there with one tiny little tack, one tiny little pin, you can go through them balloons and pop, 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 pop in a matter of minutes. Get that doubt out your life. Because sometimes you might not have that service station. Sometimes you might not have that place where you can go and patch up and re-up and get back on your grind. It's important that when your mind starts to play tricks on you, when people stop believing in you, when people tell you you've been doing this too long, ain't nothing come out of it yet. You got to be somewhere where you can patch that thing up because the doubt it's detrimental to, to success. Sometimes I think of my man, Reg Hunt, who's probably in this thing right now. And Reg is a dude who's a dear friend of mine. If I could call, if I call him right this second, Reg, I know he's going to be right here. But he always says, yo, Sean, I don't know if people want to hear about God so much. I don't know when you're doing your thing. The messages, they're powerful. The messages, they make sense. But you're always talking about God. And I tell Reg, like, look, I didn't come this far. God didn't put me in this place. He didn't bring me out of that South Bronx so that I can get to a place that I can talk to my people and leave him out. I think back and I tell y'all this all the time. When I was struggling, living in that one bedroom, newborn baby, working for free, hopping on the subway, trying to get back and forth to work. That was belief. I had to hold on to a faith. I couldn't have no doubt at that moment. I had everything to lose. Everything. When I left Bad Boy and I started that business of mine, I had everything to lose. I had to get rid of that doubt. It couldn't be no doubt. When that recession of 08 came around and I had employees look at me in the face, the only way through it, y'all, was holding on to something, something that was just a little bit bigger than me because I couldn't have let doubt creep in on me and i'm telling y'all i don't know who you pray to but it's gonna come a time in your life when believing it's just not enough that's part that's part of the game that's part of what this is about people can tell you all day long believe 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 but it's human to have doubt it's human that you're gonna wake up some mornings and ain't nothing working and you're going to question yourself and you're going to ask, is this for me? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? I've been working and I've been grinding. Is the doors ever going to open? And I'm telling you, 
That's when you're going to have to rely on faith. That's when you're going to have to rely on something outside yourself. We all know what this thing is. Trust me when I tell y'all, because I'm trying to explain the difference between belief and just how powerful doubt really is. I know some of y'all right now, some of you women who are tuned in, you believe with all of your heart and all of your soul, you wifey material, you somebody's wife, you work hard, you out there making your own money, you cook, you clean, you hold down the house, you sex your man until his knees is like linguine. You doing all of the things that you know a wife is supposed to do. But because you don't necessarily look like an IG mom, this doubt, will Mr. Right ever come in? And what I'm telling you is, lose that doubt. Keep believing. Don't just because you might be 35, just because you might be a certain age and it hasn't happened yet. Keep believing you know who you are. Don't stop, but don't let doubt creep in for a minute. And same thing to you fellas. Some of y'all are out there and you're working hard, but you might not necessarily be making baller money. You make $40,000, $50,000 a year, a year. For you, you know you husband material. You know you're a man who's gonna hold down the family. You know you're a man that when the chips is down, you willing to go out there and do whatever it takes to keep food on the table, keep them lights on. But you don't necessarily see yourself as one of them dudes who's out there balling out of control. What I'm telling you is, don't let doubt creep in. Don't let doubt creep in. She's out there. Your baby mama, your wife, she's out there. Keep believing. Same thing for some of y'all. Y'all got these big ideas. You got this business in your head. I say it all the time. You believe that you can change the game, but you have doubt. Because how could it be me? Out of all the people on planet Earth, how could this be me? Keep believing it is you. I don't care what business you have. I don't care what it is you're trying to do. Ain't nobody out there smarter. And maybe they are. But success, it doesn't revolve around that. There's going to be people out there who's going to be smarter than you. There's going to be people out there who's a little more educated, got a little more degrees behind their name. Still, keep going. Don't let doubt creep in. And it's crazy because earlier today, I was again talking to my girl, Callie. And Callie said something to me. She's like, yo, Sean, I just want to clear up the statement that I made last week. Sometimes, you know, you confuse quality with quantity. Meaning when I hit you the week before, I told you, you might not blow up. And that's okay. Because there are people who's in the Bible. And although they didn't have a big part in the Bible, the Bible couldn't be written without him. And she went on to tell me the story of Job. And it resonated with me because once upon a time, I had nothing to lose. But leaving that world of music, leaving that world of marketing, leaving that world where everybody knew me and transitioning into this space, I got everything to lose. And some of y'all are in the same position right now. You got everything to lose, but you got a little bit of doubt. You don't know if I should take that leap of faith. You've been doing what you're doing for so long. You got kids. You got bills. You've been at that job. And you got a pension waiting for you. And you're saying to yourself, I want to leave, but I'm not sure I can leave because I doubt. And she started telling me about the story of Job. Job had everything. This was one of the richest men on planet Earth. And the devil went to God and said, yo, look, the only reason Job even serves you is because look how much you blessed him. 
This man got more money than anybody on the east side. To just put it in my words. He's rich. God told him, okay, I trust Job. He's not just believing in me. Because I blessed him. So you go out there and you do what you got to do to him. You can do anything you want. You just can't take his life. And the devil went to work. The devil stripped him of everything. Everything. Killed his kids. Killed all of his animals on his farm. Took all of his money. Had him fall with sickness. Had his wife come to him and said, why don't you turn on your guard? Curse him. And Job was like, no. Had people coming to him, his friends. Job, what did you do to God? Laughing at him. He took you from the top to the bottom. But under no circumstances would Job doubt, my God is coming to save me. And I'm telling y'all this for a reason. Because it wasn't until Job started to pray, not just for himself, but for his friends, but for everybody else who was telling him to curse his God, that God restored everything that he had and gave him so much more. What I'm telling y'all is sometimes you got to put it all on the line. Sometimes this business, sometimes that relationship, sometimes that thing that you want more than anything on planet Earth, you're going to have to sacrifice for. And on the surface, it's going to look like everything is going against you. Nothing is going your way. Whatever you do, don't doubt. Just know God has got your back. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. I don't know how else to put that to you. He didn't. It's there for you. Keep going after it. But doubt, it cannot live in the same place as belief. If you believe, you got to believe unwavering. You got to believe to the point that no matter what happens, I know it's going to come to pass. I accept it as truth. I accept it as fact. It is as simple as that. There can be no doubt. It can be no uncertainty. It can be no lack of trust. So movers, as you're working tonight and as you're doing what you're doing, Uncertainty, it got to go. Lack of trust, it got to go. Let the, I don't know who's on the other end of this that need to hear this. But whoever you are, let this thing be that blaring light that's just telling you, take one more step forward. You can do this thing. Y'all know I like to keep Monday short and sweet. I feel like I went a little longer than I normally do, but I hope somebody, because I woke up today and I was going to go a whole different direction and I kept hearing this word doubt in my mind. And I was like, look, I don't know who's supposed to hear it, but I know if I get plagued by doubt, I know if it's times where I feel, Sean, what are you doing? You put it all on the line. You gave up so much. To be doing what? There's somebody out there who needs to hear you didn't make a mistake. If you are on that path that if you know in your heart and in your soul, this is my purpose. This is my reason for living. I say keep going. Don't give up. And do not let doubt creep in your mind for one minute. Belief and doubt they can't live in the same place give that doubt the eviction notice today